Bolo Minaka, my fellow Fijians, I wish I could be with you in person, but I am grateful to join you virtually to honor this anniversary of immense importance. On this day in 1879, the ship, the Leonidas, docked at Levuka. Those who disembarked could not know it, but their first steps on our shores began the Grimmit era. Over the next 37 years, over 61,000 indentured laborers would be brought from British India to Fiji. Britain outlawed the slave trade in 1807 and abolished all slavery in the empire in 1833. Sadly, that change proved to be in name only. British colonies still demanded cheap labor. In place of the slave trade, they turned to the practice of indentured servitude. For those who valued financial gain over the dignity of human life, indenture was an efficient system. Rather than purchase their victims and force them on board ships, they simply misled them with false promises and preyed on their hope for a better life. They systematically lied about the nature of work, the duration of work, and the likelihood that any indentured worker would ever return home. Those on board the Leonidas and those many ships that followed had never heard of Fiji before being sent here. Most expected a journey of days rather than months. Most expected to return home to their families after a few years of work. Almost none ever did. Instead, the Girmatia, as they came to be known, endured years of back-breaking labor under brutal conditions that meet the definition of slavery that we hold today. They performed the hardest work of building the colonial economy, working cane farms, farming copra, laying brick and carving out roads. They worked under the whip. They lived under constant threat of abuse and sexual assault. Whether you were called a slave or a servant, a threshing cuts the same. Rape is rape. Abuse is abuse. The conditions were so terrible, it was not uncommon for laborers to be driven to suicide. And they endured five years of this labor while earning wages too meager to fund a decent living, much less to fund a return home to British India for most. So once the terms of their indentured ended, Fiji became their home, not by choice, but by circumstance. And it was our good fortune that they remained because they made the best out of those circumstances through wonderful contributions to the nation in agriculture, in education, in medicine and literature. They founded schools and started businesses. Their food festivals and traditions added richness to our cultural fabric. So much of what we think of as Fijian, including roti and curry, was introduced by the Girmatia. But despite their making enormous contributions to the country, their struggle did not end with indenture. The colonial government never accepted the Girmatia as equal human beings, much less as full Fijians. What was painfully true for the first Girmatias was perhaps even more painful for their descendants, for whom Fiji was the only home they had ever known. This was their country, and they were Fijians. But they were not treated as Fijians. They weren't even given the right to be called Fijians. The British colonial government maintained its power by drawing and deepening lines between different ethnic communities. To maintain the European position of prominence, they made a scapegoat of the Indo-Fijian population, painting them as outsiders who were undeserving of a full place in Fijian society. They created anti-Indian sentiment and implemented a discriminatory system that placed one kind of Fijian over another, in law and in practice.
no matter how much an individual achieved in a lifetime of work and study, they were always of lesser value because of their ethnicity. Up until 1927, the then Legislative Council allowed for Itoke representation through nominees to the Great Council of Chiefs, but did not grant Indo-Fijians votes or representation at all. We lived with that legacy for years, post-independence, under an electoral system that left Indo-Fijians with votes of lesser value. The injustice is almost impossible for us to comprehend in today's Fiji. Imagine building the colonial economy only to be told that you and your children did not have a place in it and that your presence in Fiji was only tolerated. Imagine, though you, your parents and your grandparents were born in Fiji, you were not considered a genuine Fijian and were denied an equal voice in elections. That is the cold truth of our history. We know it from the painful accounts of those who lived through it. Accounts of being worked to the bone, accounts of abuse and discrimination, accounts of rape committed by overseers against the laborers. And for decades afterwards, accounts of being denied basic dignity in their rightful home. I learned very little of this growing up. In fact, most Fijians did not. It pains me to know that so few ever knew the full breadth of this brutal reality. Everyone should know this story. It should have been taught in our schools from the day we gained our independence. It is part of our history and we must know our history, not just the triumphs and the glories, but the injustices and the blemishes. I believe that if past governments had done this, we would have avoided the worst tragedies to befall the nation. Because while the yoke of oppression was forged by the colonial government, its legacy was carried forward in ignorance by certain groups of ethnic supremacists. These races fell for the lying that Fiji was stronger as a divided nation. They were totally uninformed of history. And all of their stupidity, short-sightedness and hatred were channeled into a single traumatic blow to the nation in the 1987 coup, which took place on this very same day, 14th of May. The timing of the event added insult to a grievous injury because that coup was motivated by ethnic hatred targeted at our Indo-Fijian community. A single man's pursuit of power robbed thousands of Fijians of any faith in the future of their country. They fled Fiji in droves. They left homes in desperation with fear in their hearts and devoid of hope for the future. Families were separated. Many of our best and brightest people took their talents to other countries where they felt safe, where they felt that they would be treated as equal. Those countries' gain was our loss. These Fijians did not live for greener pastures. They had fulfilling lives here in Fiji. More than 100 years after their ancestors had been brought to work Fiji's land, they were driven out of the only home they had ever known in fear and desperation. It is an insult to every Fijian to attempt to rewrite history. You cannot revise the hard truth that it was racism and discrimination that forced these Fijians from their country. You cannot so callously disregard people's lives and experiences. While many of you have made wonderful lives for yourselves in Australia, I know you all continue to hold Fiji close to your hearts. This is evident in the time we share together whenever I'm abroad. I can see the love of country in the members of our diaspora community every time I hear you speak about your island home. Your love is also apparent through the close ties that you maintain with Fiji via family, friends and loved ones. We have come a long way since the Girmedera, a long way since 1987, and a long way since 2000. At the heart of this change sits the 2013 Fijian Constitution, which enshrines my government's unwavering commitment to protect the rights and freedoms of every Fijian equally. 
It finally delivered recognition that was decades overdue by declaring every citizen in this country to be a Fijian, period. Fijians with equal votes of equal value. Fijians with equal protection under the law. Fijians united by a common purpose of building a better Fiji, shedding our past and focusing on the future, a hopeful future. While we have had to pivot and adapt our course over the last two years of the pandemic, Fiji's successful national vaccination campaign has put us back on track to recovery. We are as committed as ever to nurturing new and emerging growth sectors, improving connectivity, and embracing innovative technologies that can bolster our sustainable development progress. We have put in place investor-friendly policies that will support those who want to venture into the Fijian business market. Coming to Fiji has also never been easier. With quarantine requirements and other COVID restrictions recently removed, visitor arrivals are expected to exceed 400,000 by the end of this year. While you may be nearly 3,000 kilometers from your homeland today, I want each of you to know that Fiji will always be open to you and your families. It has been and will always remain your home. And yes, you can have multiple citizenships, including Fijian and Australian, should you seek it. So no matter where you may find yourself in the years to come, please never forget that happiness is only a flight away. God bless you all. Vinaka.